Isaac Gordon Chilemba. Welcome to the program Insight on Zodiac. Thank you. But who is Isaac Chilemba? Um, Isaac Chilemba is a fighter, um, born and raised here in Branta. Um, I believe I'm honest. Uh, I believe um, I make friends out of everybody. And that's more likely of who Isaac is. It's tough, quite a tough question to answer because mm -hmm. people can tell who you are from outside. It's not easy to tell about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But you are a fighter. I'm a fighter. Born and raised in Blanda. Do you come from Blanda? Yes. Um, okay. I was born here in Nuzu. Mm -hmm. um, spent most of my teenage, uh, my, my, my teens in Dilande. Mm -hmm. And I end up in um, Chilomon before I leave for South Africa. All right. Uh, let's get back to your career for a moment. How did you become a boxer? Well, one day I was walking at, uh, with a friend of mine. I went to Brunt Life Center to see what's going on there. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I walked this building. I saw kids standing outside, people standing outside the, the, uh, the hall looking through the window. Um, at that time, there was boys in a, in a camp. They were preparing for Manchester team, uh, yeah. for Manchester games. I mean, so when I saw boxing, I always I, I, I was I always been interested in fighting. Uh, when I was young, I used to watch kung fu movies, and um, I used to mimic some of uh, martial arts things. And when I saw, I was like, Oh my God, this is what I've been looking for. And I walked in and asked. How could I start? Mm -hmm. And I said, you can start right here, right now. And that was it. All right. Oh, hoping that you weren't just fighting when you grew up? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, uh, when I started, I didn't know anything about boxing. I didn't mm -hmm. know that boxing, you can get anywhere. You can do anything as a fighter. Uh, I didn't know much about boxing here in Malawi. I was surprised when I saw uh, these guys training in the, uh, at Brand Drive Center. Mm -hmm. So when I started the boxing, I never really had uh, a thought of who I could become. Are you surprised uh, this is what you have become? No, not really, because uh, I put my heart and soul to it. Mm. I worked out. To the minute I realized that this is what I love to do, this is what I enjoy doing in my life, and I want uh, to be somebody as a fighter, um, I put everything into it, and uh, to where I am now, I'm not surprised at all. I think I worked. I worked hard to get up here. You are now in the world spotlight, and that didn't really happen such easily when you were in Malawi. You didn't make a mark, that big mark in Malawi. Why do you think it was so? Um, unfortunately, here uh, we like of uh, the structure of everything, uh, uh, the structure of. Sectioning bodies, uh, promotions, man management, fathers themselves. So it's not easy to come out of here unless you leave the country, be somewhere where they can put fighters on, a, uh, on the eyes of the world. Uh, it's not easy to make it while you're here locally. And when I was here, I was just an amateur. I left here as an amateur, I went to South Africa, that's where I turned professional. And probably the question would be, what moved you uh, to go to South Africa? Uh, well, I had uh, a half-sister in, in South Africa, mm -hmm. and uh, when my mother passed away in 2004, she asked me if I want to uh, stay here and try to see what I can do, because at then I was living with my young brother, or do I want to go to South Africa and try to do something, study, because I was only in Form 1 then. I started to do something, so I decided to go. And uh, when I go, when I go there, I looked for boxing gyms, and there was one of the fighters from Malawi, David Masinyane. I contacted him and went to his gym, and uh, that was it. When so, so if I hear you right, uh, initially it was not uh, a move to South Africa to start boxing. No, uh, no, it was uh, basically to uh, try to do something with life in general. So I knew I love boxing and I was an amateur fighter here. Uh, I never knew I was good enough for international, uh, at international level. So uh, when I left here, I told myself I'll go there 
uh, hopefully I can get back to school mm -hmm. and maybe find something to do. I was young then, maybe I can work somewhere. And uh, as things progress, I'll find the gyms because I really enjoy boxing. I'll either contact Dave Mazzignani or uh, find out where the, gym, the gyms are and training, uh, train and see what I can do with life. And when I got there, um, at uh, John Tipoy Gym, it was on an amateur, amateur gym. Um, everybody was telling me how good I was. Uh, I could tell the profession, I could do it as a professional. That's when I decided to say, you know what, I'm here, I love mm -hmm. fighting. Let me just turn professional. And, and the opportunities make, are there, yes. yes. Okay. Let me make this my life, my lifehood. All right. Now, uh, let's go back to your career one more time. When you reflect at what you have achieved so far, from the time you started uh, real fighting, professional fighting in South Africa, to this end, what do you think has made it for you to be there? Uh, it's a belief, self-confidence, uh, um, knowing what we want. Uh, they say you need to have a will. So it's the will, knowing that, uh, saying that, uh, next week I want to be up that, that hill and I'm going to do whatever it takes to cram that hill to get on top. And work hard, learn every day. Uh, uh, don't be scared to learn from different people because everybody comes with a different, with different uh, view to what they think of you or what they think of a situation. So uh, keep learning each and every day, uh, pushing myself, wanting more. And I truly believe in myself. All right. Um, over the years, uh, since you relocated to South Africa, your graph has been growing. But the last two fights have been quite a challenge for you. And the last fight with um, uh, Kovalev was quite um, a world sport, right? And uh, there was so much expectation from you, uh, from Malawian supporters. But at the same time, the world knew that uh, you were meeting a guy who is undefeated. Why did you take that chance to fight somebody who hasn't been defeated before? Uh, to be the best, you have to defeat the best. So my, my aim is to be the best in the world, is uh, to be somebody, to go down in boxing, in boxing history as a legend. So to do that, I have to fight the best. I have to find, to find the top fighters in the world. Otherwise, I'll end up just being a wannabe. So yes, it was a, quite a challenge fight. Uh, the fight before that in Canada, I still believe I won it. I think I was robbed, even though it was a very close fight. So I was okay. And this fight uh, with Kovalev was a really good fight. Uh, I did whatever I'd take. Well, what, what I did all what I could have done uh, to win the fight. Unfortunately, I came out short. And it happens. And you know, I'm a, I'm a fighter, as I said. I will just have to pick myself up and get back into it. Yeah, people believe that you gave him quite some good uh, run for his money. Oh uh, yeah, I was. Uh, I went there to win. I didn't go there just to get in there and for uh, just fight. I went there with the aim of to win those girls to be somebody in boxing. So yes, I was winning the fight up until uh, round six. Then I got dropped in seventh round. Then things changed because they all say. In boxing, one punch can change everything. Mm -hmm. So he got he, he caught me with a good shot. Uh, it was my fault. I made a uh, I made a wrong angle. I was turning, and at the same time, I got caught. I was quite quite open. I got caught, and from there, I was shaken. I couldn't do much. My knees were a bit gone. Then he capitalized from there. Now, uh, quite so many uh, boxing commentators uh, say that. Lately, you are lacking that killing punch. Yeah. What do you say about that? Uh, we all born differently. Uh, the killer punch is not something that you can develop. It's not something that you can just get from anywhere. You're born with it. So, unfortunately, God gave me the talent of, uh, to do something as a fighter, but never gave me that powerful punch as Mark Carson was. So that doesn't bother me at all. My goal when I go to the fight is not to knock my opponent out, it's to defeat them, uh, beat them down to win the fight, to, become a, to, to come out victorious. And now uh, you've lost two fights in a row. Uh, what should we expect next? Are you going back to the ring soon? Yeah, I'll be fighting 
before the end of the year. Uh, in fact, now when I get back, man, um, I start conditioning again, so I'm getting back into it. And uh, hopefully I'll be fighting either in September or somewhere in uh, October. Mm-hmm. And uh, next year we're working on getting a rematch with some guys to get cover over again. You are actually planning to get a rematch? Yes. Serious? Uh, yes, I think, uh, uh, I, think I, I did well enough and uh, I did something that no one ever done when fighting cover and uh, I still believe that if I didn't do that wrong move, open up myself and get caught uh, right now it would be a different story. What is your ultimate goal uh, if you want a rematch with a guy who's got three bells to himself and those are great titles, all of them, what is it that you'd like to achieve? Uh, my goal is to get in there and defeat them, uh, make a history, uh, become the best out of Africa, the best out of Malawi and go down the books in history as the legend. Who, who, who really do you like to associate with in terms of boxing? Who is your legend? Uh, people that I looked up to, there were three. Uh, of course, there's other fighters that uh, I love, but these three were, till today, they're my legends. There's Muhammad Ali, uh, Sugar Ray Renard, and Rogers Jr. Um, they're the guys that I look up to. I look at their style, their speed, their movements, and I, I truly believe that these guys are the best. And you would like to get to their level? Yes, I would love to get to their level and maybe even better. Even better? Even better. What would be the best that you would like to, uh, to acclaim uh, in the world boxing arena? Well, uh, defeating the top fighters in the world right now in my division, uh, Kovarev Stevenson, uh, Better BF, defeat them and become a world champion again and defend it a couple of times and the history will be different. Um, I'm not just, some, uh, I won't be just somebody, I'll be someone from Africa. It'll be something that had never been done before. So I think I can do it and I yeah, will. Yeah, there, there were moments that you, after you relocated South Africa, you also wanted to relocate to the US. There were those speculations. How true were they? Well, uh, when we talk about boxing, to me, uh, US is the best place you can be. Uh, they, they take their sport seriously. They take boxing very seriously. So, if you ask any fighter from anywhere they want to get to states, sign to a uh, top fighter, I mean top promoter in America, mm-hmm. and get into TV, like HBO, Showtime. So, that's my goal. And uh, right now I've been going back and forth to America, uh, training there, and coming back after fight. And that's my goal. If I really want to make something out of the sport, I have to sacrifice some things and do it to get better. So, so what is delaying that process? I'm, I'm already doing it. You're already doing yeah, it? I, I go back and forth, training there. Unfortunately, I'm not ready to go to live there yet, no. Uh, I've built myself up in South Africa and it's not just easy to pack up and go. So I, eventually I'll get to live there, but uh, that there's nothing nothing major stopping me to do so. It's just. I've built up myself uh, in South Africa, I live with my family, I've got a home in South Africa and just, just to pack up to America right now is not that easy. So. But I'm okay with what I do, I go there, I spend four or five months a year in, uh, in the US for training, fights and come back to South Africa. Now, uh, you say you've built up, uh, yourself up in South Africa. What are you doing back home in Malawi? This is where you started, this is where your home is and so many people are really happy. You have not renounced your citizenship. Uh, yes, I'm here to see family. Uh, 98% of my family members are still here in Malawi. Uh, so I came, I haven't been here for a while. So I came just to have quality time with my family and just take a holiday, five days holiday before I go. Uh, uh, what what about the boxing um, uh, the boxing career in Malawi? What are you doing to help them? Up? Uh, it's still low. Uh, yeah, I've been trying for a little while, trying to do something with the boxing. It's just 
It doesn't seem like anyone is interested here or get back to me on what I'm thinking because unfortunately I live in South Africa and I cannot just come and do it. I need to uh, connect with people and uh, structure will tell them what I need to do. I've been trying with my team try to do some kind of workshop uh, to work with uh, from uh, the bottom to the top, which is working with the boxing board, uh, the section of bodies, and work with the uh, promoters, managers, sponsors to the fighters and uh, show them the way of doing things, how it, uh, how it should be running and how uh, other countries do it and uh, to get into TV and stuff like that. Unfortunately, I've been putting out the proposal, that proposal for years now and no one as yet has come back to me, so I'm, I'm still trying. So, actually, you have been putting up proposals and uh, Malawians are not interested. Yeah, in I've been trying. And I, I, um, country, I'm also in the process of trying to build up my own promotional company. And, uh, where? In South Africa or in Malawi? Uh, and, uh, unfortunately, it's going to be in South Africa because that's where I am. But uh, it's going to be based on uh, promoting my own fathers. I, I want to make a deal of putting up a few fathers a year here and try to get them on a TV, um, super sport and others where they can actually show them out, out of country and out of Africa where people can see them because uh, the, the ex exposure is more important than just doing it locally. Yeah, you, th you think we have fi good fighters in Malawi? Yes, uh, everybody can, uh, you can learn how to fight and must even be good at it. And I uh, hear there's a lot of guys that they're very determined to do something. It's just uh, there's always something to put them down and to get that strength to keep going is not that easy. So I think when they know that if I do this, I'll become something, they'll put their heart and soul on it, and one day they'll become what they want to be. And do you believe it's possible for some it's Malawian fighters possible. to get to your level it's and even more beyond? You can even get better. Mm -hmm. Any fighter can get even better than I've done, I've, I've done so far. Now, Isaac, Many, many, many times you have wanted to meet the president. Can you tell us, what is exactly do you want to tell the president? Uh, well, um, last time I did meet uh, the late uh, Dr. Bingo Mutake and I also met uh, uh, Madam Joyce Banda. Uh, there's always something that now we love to meet the current president. Unfortunately, I was here for such a short time and it wasn't easy to ask and organize anything, but... Um, I feel that I, I definitely I will come back. I would love to meet them and uh, discuss some my, my plans, what I would really like to do as far as boxing Malawi is concerned. Uh, you think your message would be more heard when you speak to the president yeah, because the, they, the other level is not doing quite yeah, good enough? Yeah, uh, somewhere, somehow, somebody somewhere can do something to help me do it. Like, there's a saying to help me help you. If somebody can help me to help them, uh, will, will be the best that I can come out of everything that I'm trying to do. And you believe you cannot do that with other people other than the president? No, I can do with other people. I mean, it's not something that uh, the president has to get involved. I just need uh, Boxing Malawi involved. I need to get uh, sponsors behind it. Uh, I need to get the whole crew, uh, the whole team in because I'm trying to put out this workshop where it's going to be teaching uh, how everything is run, how to get fathers out there and, uh, and get to the fathers themselves, uh, talk about lifestyle and how you conduct yourself uh, towards the fight and to what it takes to be in there. Because anybody can fight, but there's something, there's some kind of X factor that you need to actually become somebody as a fighter. So there's a things that you need to do uh, to get where you are, to get a, a victory. Okay, currently, uh, as you live in South Africa, uh, uh, there isn't such much uh, news about boxing in South Africa that goes out to the world. Probably we don't know. Is really South Africa the best place for you to progress to the level, world level that you'd like to, to be? I said, boxing is much better in South Africa than it is anywhere in Africa. Uh, I think. When it comes to the sport of boxing, South Africa is better. They know how to do their things. Even though boxing now is, is going a bit down right now, but they're still be, uh, better. They're still best in Africa. So it was the best place to be as a uh, as a fighter to push me to the next level. And so yes, South Africa was good to get there, and 
I've managed to make it to states. And right now I don't need to go anywhere else than states because that's where, that's the, the mecca of, uh, of boxing. Uh, apart from UK and other countries, mm. states, mm. they truly uh, know how to, do, uh, how to support their sport, how uh, they take their boxing seriously. The investment is so much in other countries than in Malawi, so that's what you're trying to tell us. Uh, no, it's not about it's not like I'm investing something, but uh, it's somewhere where I have to be to be who I want to be in the world. Mm -hmm. If I come back fighting in Africa, I'll, I'll fight uh, somebody, I'll fight somebody, and I'll make news of all but I'll never be, no one will know who I am. Mm -hmm. But if I'm in sport, I'll get into TV, uh, US TV, get on HBO Showtime. Everybody in the world, in the boxing, uh, boxing world, will know who I am, and that's how, that's what I'm planning to do. Okay, um, what do you want uh, people to remember you after boxing? What will you do? Because boxing has got uh, an age limit, just like in football. You come yeah. to a, a period you can't fight no more. Uh, as I said, I want to go down as a legend. Uh, when people mention the word boxing, I want to be in the mix. Uh, like today, even people who's never seen boxing before, who never watched bo boxing before, when they say boxing, they know ah, Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali, because they're the legends. Everybody and for sure, him. here yeah. we say Isaac Chidemba, yeah. Gordon Boy. Yes, <laughs> yeah. but I want to make a mark all over the world. If I, if you go to Philippines and say boxing, they go, oh, Isaac Chidemba. If you go to somewhere in Ghana and say boxing, they go, oh, I'll be one of the top fighters to come up in the mix, like Muhammad Ali and all of them are. That's my main goal. Now, you, you talked about fighting coming up either in September or October. Yeah. What, is this a professional fight? Or yeah, we'll always, be, we'll always be professional. A professional or is this um, uh, fighting for a belt and owner? Or? No, uh, this will be what we call a comeback fight. Uh, uh, you need to fight regularly to get, to get high in rankings until you get to the top three and fight for the world title again. So I'm still in top five, but there's a, a thing called um, justified. You can fight a 10 round or 12 round without a, a title on, on mm -hmm. uh, without a title no on, title fight. Uh, on mm -hmm. a line, yeah, mm -hmm. but justified. That's what happens more often, just fights. Um, because uh, in each division, there's few champions in different categories, few champions, and to get a championship fight, you have to fight Few, few fights to get high. The more you win, the higher you get. So this will definitely be just a 12 rounder or a 10 rounder, uh, just to get back into it. Uh, it's not gonna be just fighting nobody, it's gonna be a guy who's also top ranked, because since I'm still in top five, I cannot fight someone out of top 10. I need to fight uh, the it guys that are in, that, in the yeah. top 10 in the mm. world. Mm. So it's not gonna be just a fight, it's gonna be a top fight, but there'll be no title on the stack. I don't know, maybe they can put a title, any type of title, because there's small titles to, uh, to get to the top of the desert. International titles, continental titles. So I don't know what it is, but I think it's going to be just a, just a, a 12 round or 10 round just to get back into it, because uh, last time I was such in, uh, I, I was in a uh, main title fight. Mm -hmm. So then after that, next year we'll see if I can get back on the title fight. Isaac, is boxing... Uh something that can build your life after boxing? Yeah, of course, yeah. Is uh, it rewarding? Yes. Uh, if you get to the top, if you, you make it, um, you can make it a career. It's not, it's not like something that you just get a re uh, 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 reward after winning or getting involved in a fight. No, it's a career. It's a professional. It's a professional career. It's like somebody working working at a company and uh, to whatever job they're doing, they get paid to that. Boxing is, uh, as, uh, is the same as that. And uh, of course, the higher you get, the better you get as well. Okay. Um, you have spoken about Malawi, um, particular officials not being very much interested to help build the boxing um, uh, profession in Malawi. I just want you to say something about upcoming uh, boxers. What is your message to upcoming boxers in Malawi? Uh, no, never stop believing. Uh, never give up on your dream. Everybody, have, everybody has a dream, and if you truly believe in your dream, you can 
you can achieve it. And your dream is to become big, to become, to become a legend. A, yes. And they can become legends too. Yes. Whatever they wish to do. Uh, there's a, a saying, um, I think therefore I am. That's what I believe. Whatever you think of yourself, that's what you become. That's what you are. Uh, if you keep telling yourself that I'm useless, you'll be useless for the rest of your life. If you keep believing that I am the best, you'll be the best. And uh, you're the best. Well, Muhammad Ali said something. That, uh, even if you're not sure, just keep pretending until it comes natural. So just, even if you're not sure that you are the best, you just have to keep pretending that you're the best, best until it becomes natural that you are the best. Have you used that philosophy in your life yourself? That's why I'm here. That's why I'm getting where I am. I know where uh, I know what I want, and I believe I'm good enough to be whatever I want to be in, the, in this world. Would you renounce your Malayan citizenship at some point, as it was speculated at some point? Uh, I'm, I'm always, I never lost my citizenship. I'm always a Malawian. Uh, yes, the fact that I went to South Africa to get better in a sport doesn't mean I'm, I'm a South African or American or whatever. I'm a Malawian, and I always be. I didn't go anywhere trying to change my citizenship or anything, no. Or I struggled to get a visa to live in those countries. And you always be proud to be Malawian? Yes, I always be proud to be And Malawian. fight as a Malawian? Yes. Okay. Isaac Chilemba, it was a pleasure that you accepted to be our guest in Insight on Zodiac. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you.